see the car from here. We can make it if we run. No, we can't. Why, why not? Because we're being hunted. Oh my god. Straight to the bushes, right to the right. You run to the car. I've got him. Jeremy. Well, howdy there, partners. Today we're going to be talking about an interesting new caliber uh, developed by our friends over at Q. Kevin Brennanham, love him or hate him, does come out with interesting stuff. So we have the 8.6 Blackout. Micah, how would you describe the 8.6 Blackout? It kind of blew my mind. I did not expect it to be as quiet as it was. It is a very large, very heavy, satisfying round to shoot. It is like the 300 Blackout uh, is is you and this is the guy she told you not to worry about. But today we're gonna be putting the 8.6 through its paces. We're gonna be shooting it a bunch. We're gonna be talking about it. We're gonna be doing some ballistic tests with it. And uh, hopefully you can learn a little bit more about this new round. It's still developing. There's still a lot of load development to be done. No pun intended. And um, so this is a early kind of first look at it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned. But before we get into that, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel, who is who, Micah? Uh, the Sonoran Desert Institute. That's right, you know, we've, we've got to make sure we don't uh, put too much shame on their name because they are really cool, they do support the channel, and if you're looking to get into gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We love them, they've been big supporters for a while, and some of their gunsmiths have actually sent us abominations they've made because of our channel, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Good. Good. So <laughs> Thank you to the Sonoran Desert Institute. Of course, we cannot forget primary arms right here. We got the one to eight compact. We talk about this all the time, but I think this is one of the first times we showed it on the channel. Uh, this is one of my favorite optics. I love it. It's, it's actually really cool. We're not just saying that because we're sponsored. I mean, we are sponsored, full disclosure, but we love them. Tons of great products. Um, they're good people. Go and check them out. And of course, if you're looking to do a little bit of dry fire, um, you can make your dry fire a lot better with Mantis. So Mantis has these cool systems. They can simulate recoil. They give you little lasers in your fire. Um, I am a huge fan of these systems. It just makes your dry fire that much better. Any professional shooter does dry fire. Make sure you do it. And of course, unlike the camera that this is filmed on, unlike the TV you're watching this on, AAC ammunition is made in the US of A. Go and check them out. They don't make 8.6 Blackout yet, but maybe they will, right, Micah? If we harass them enough, That is so freaking quiet. Um, it's hard to describe just how quiet 8.6 is. Um, I've heard 114 decibels, but until I get good data from like a really, really good, like Pew Science, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna take that decibel rating as like the end all be all. I will say it is probably the quietest round plus can combination I have heard. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this round and about, uh, you know, what, what, what makes it what it is. Why are you wearing the cowboy hat? It's not like a cowboy gun. I don't know, man. I think I'm just a little bit lost. So right here we have the 300 black and we have the 8.6 black. So in many ways they're pretty similar, uh, kind of a similar approach to a problem. In the case of 300 black, we have a 5.56 that is necked up to a 30 cal projectile. When it comes to 8.6 black, we have a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is the parent case, which is then shortened, and then it is necked up to a 338. Why 338? Well, for whatever reason, uh, whether that be how fluid dynamics works within a suppressor, 338 happens to be very quiet when it comes out of a suppressor, not to mention that 338 projectiles have extremely good BC. This leads to a fairly good round, and so because these rounds are so heavy, there's not a whole lot of propellant behind them, especially on the subsonics. For the 8.6, you actually need to have a pretty fast twist rate. So this has a one in three twist rate. It has been noted that maybe a one in two could have been better. That's uh, according to Q. Um, however, uh, if you're not using a bonded projectile, and to be clear, most 338 projectiles are bonded, then they're probably not gonna come apart. It's probably more of a safety. In any case, the one in three twist works really well, both for stability um, as well as ballistics. So there's a couple interesting factoids there. When it comes to the supersonic rounds, they're rotating on average somewhere between half a million to 750. Um, that's 
psychotically fast. So this does induce spin drift past 500. Uh, as far as making good shots, what that means is because it's rotating so fast, it has a tendency to drift off to the right. However, what's really cool is when it enters a human body, it does crazy shit. And I can't wait to show you guys that. But another really good thing about the spin is that it has insane possible armor piercing capabilities. So if you were to take a 8.6 and say, get some tungsten and tips on there, you're gonna be piercing some pretty crazy body armor even with a slower round. Now that being said, the 8.6 black, we have it on a 12 inch barrel here, which performs really well, is a shorter range round. Even with your supersonics, you're looking at around a 500 yard gun. Now the idea behind it was that they wanted to solve in their words, 99% of the problems. I would say closer to probably 90. It does a really good job. A lot of gunfights take place in that three to 400 yard kind of range. So you're getting a very quiet gun, you're getting psychotic ballistics, and on top of that, you get very little recoil. So due to the weight of the gun, these fixes are psychotically light, somewhere close to about 5.3 pounds with the suppressor a little bit more. Um, this is something I would have no problem just carrying on my pack in addition to a primary weapon. So in an urban situation, I see this being a really good gun. Now for the plains of Idaho out here where we have really long range, I probably want something just a little bit more. But for my urbanites out there, I think this is a really good potential solution to a couple of various problems that are out there. And those problems can be ended with a bullet. Okay, we're gonna do a direct sound comparison between these two. Now you guys are gonna ask us, can you please measure the decibels? Let me be honest. The decibel measuring equipment that we have is not going to be able to accurately measure the peak due to how slow they refresh. So it's not going to be an accurate representation of what the actual signatures are. You need to remember that. You need some very sophisticated equipment. But what we can hear is just how it compares to my voice. So we're gonna go ahead. So right here, we have 300 black. And right here, we have 8.6. Okay, now we have 8.6. I mean, so I mean, it is a shorter suppressor, but I mean, you know, you're not gonna have that long of a can on a, on a shorty, you know, 300 black gun. So it's just cool. It's just cool. I'm just having fun, okay? So with the fix right here, we have the 8.6. These are from Discrete Ballistics. We are using all rounds from Discrete Ballistics. And these are uh, unfortunately incredibly, incredibly devastating rounds. As you can see here, they have a very large hollow point and they have uh, slices down the side to ensure that they open up and flower upon impact. The uh, result, I'm told, is um, pretty insane. I'm really interested. These look nasty, don't they? They're just, dude, so scary. So these are subs. They are going 1,000 out th at the muzzle from a 12-inch barrel. So um, we'll see how they do. All right, starting the ballistic test. We're gonna be starting with 300 blackout. So now for the 300, we have 188 grain. For the 8.6, it is 280 grain. They're both subsonic. So, Tox Chief ammunition is, uh, what, Micah? Expensive. Really expensive. Today is hot. The day is very hot. So big thank you to Discrete Ballistics and uh, let's get into it. Three to blackout, uh, Discrete Ballistics, Dot's dead of course, so uh, we're gonna wing it. Free ball. Free ball. Good thing right there. Is that good as Charles? No. <laughs> so that was very violent. Um, that was incredible performance from the 300 blackout. Now to be clear, those rounds do not feed in a semi-auto. So uh, we're not getting reliable feeding, but we had great expansion. You can see that excellent permanent wound cavity right there. In addition, you can see the projectile right there, which didn't fully exit, but penetrated uh, to the depth that we wanted. So excellent performance on the 300 blackout. I'm very excited to see how the uh, 8.6 black is going to do. Now it should be noted, a 300 blackout is not a long range caliber at all. 8.6 with the 280 grain discrete ballistics round. Let's see what happens. Did you hear that? You know, when we talked to Kevin Brittingham, he said that this was uh, supposed to be magnum power in a slight rifle. That would appear to be the case as this did not care. It smoked straight through. So we have set up another gel block. We're going to attempt to uh, capture some of the energy in there. So we'll see. This thing's got ass behind it, that's for sure. We're gonna step back to 50 because uh, that round literally does not care at all. It it has some penetration. That is 100% the guy she told you not to worry about right there. 50 yards, 8.6 black. Mike, how, how do you want to describe this to the audience? I am blown away 
Um, I've never seen a round with this much carry through, even on armor piercing rounds. That that freaking twist rate, dude, just the round doesn't care, dude. So we're gonna set up three gel blocks and see if we can try to capture this thing. But it's been smoking through everything. I didn't expect this at all. Jesus Christ, dude. Okay, three gel blocks. Um, yeah, this is, uh, so Kevin was telling us about how he kills like Cape Buffalo with this thing. This is like, uh, it's a lot of penetration. Like that's a big game cartridge, 100%. That is magnum power in like a little teeny five pound rifle. What the fuck, dude? Okay, three blocks, 8.6, please stop. I mean, if you need penetrative power, and again, being a, uh, you know, primarily to start kind of a magnum round, this is 100% delivering magnum performance because that thing has crazy penetrative power. I don't know, I don't even know what to say about it. It, it just, it started to slow down the third block, but it just doesn't care. Cape Buffalo, man, take him right down. 100% gonna smoke straight through a human being, so not as good, but if you wanna smoke through concrete and then into a human being, we're gonna fire an FMJ. We're, we're gonna see what happens. I don't think anything different, but why not? Actually, so 8.6 black, we're gonna, we're gonna say this. This is a brand new round and uh, they are still figuring out that projectile, I would say. Because that, uh, that crazy one, uh, I think that's gonna go through a whale. The op. And uh, let's see how it performs. So obviously this video is sponsored by Reed Medical. This is important to me because I can't name the amount of colleagues and friends that I've worked with in the military that have been completely screwed over by the VA disability rating system. Um, I want to talk about it for like five hours in with anger sometimes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pass over to you guys. That way I'm not stealing your thunder. So here you guys are. Please. Hey, I'm MJ. Uh, I'm with Ree. And, uh, you know, we exist to provide support to veterans who are going through the VA, ability, VA disability increase process. Uh, Theo, you're a disabled vet. Talk to me about your experience. Yeah, so uh, I'm a, a Navy vet, Navy SEAL, um, medically discharged. Very far from the ocean right now. Very, very far from the ocean right now, um, but I can still outswim them. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the process is very daunting. To all my vets out there, you would definitely agree with me. Uh, the process is not easy, and, you know, re-medical is existing for vets like yourselves. The, the difference maker really for folks having successful claims is robust medical evidence, and that's what we do. RE is a leader in disability services, and we specialize in providing you access to doctors and the support to get the evidence that you need to get the claim where you need it to be. Uh, the VA has historically awarded about 94% of our veterans with a significant increase in disability benefits. When you add appeals, that jumps up to about 97. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on and telling my people a little bit about this. Um, if you're going through that process right now, if you've gotten your rating and uh, you kind of got screwed over, go and check them out. Thank you guys so much for coming on. And uh, let's get back to shooting dummies who don't get a disability rating because they're not real human beings. <laughs> Yeah, the 300 Winchester Magnum, 100% has that dog in him because that cracked the table. That was so freaking violent. You can, uh, just disgusting. It just blew it apart, dude. 300 Winchester Magnum definitely is a more powerful round, but I'm really interested. Jesus, do you see how that round broke apart? That Mark 248 Mod Zero is crazy. Oh my gosh. You know, it's killed a lot of people. You can see why. Now, I'm interested in the developments with 8.6 regarding the rounds, and I'm interested in the very low signature. So, now that we've done some ballistics, let's kind of sum up that up and then get into signature. So, the 8.6, ballistically, I would say based on the rounds that we had, clearly they're meant for big game and they're gonna probably do really well with that, but there's still a lot of development being done in the round. So let's talk about one thing that the 8.6 is really good at, and that is going to be signature reduction. Micah, what is signature reduction? Signature reduction is the reducing your signature. So like, uh, if you wrote it in pencil, you can erase it. Unlike pen, you have to use whiteout. 
So when we're talking signature reduction, we're talking a lot of things, but we're talking sound, we're talking flash, and we're talking heat signature. The 8.6 is really good at having an extremely low flash, having a very small heat signature, at least in comparison to other DMR type rounds, and of course, having a very, very low sound signature. So when we're talking about, say, urban combat or something along those lines, say we are fighting in a city for no particular reason against no particular foe that we're gonna name, and we need to be able to make shots from an in-place position within a house or within a tower in a building or something like that, um, having that extremely low sound signature, that extremely low flash signature is gonna be very advantageous. And obviously this is a shorter range round. However, if within the city you're only going to that range anyhow, this is going to be a really good rifle for that case. So there is definitely a use case scenario when it comes to the fix. I think that's the best way to describe the fix is that with a lot of products that Q comes out with, I would say that they're, they're, they're definitely shifted hard to one side or the other side. And what I mean by that is you take like an M4 or an AR-15. It's a very generalistic system. Wouldn't you agree, Micah? Yeah. It's, it's not great at everything, but it's, it's okay at a lot of things and pretty good at a few things. Now, with something like the Fix or the Honey Badger or the Boombox or any of those other guns that Q's come out with, they push in one direction. So um, with the Fix right here in 8.6, we have an extremely lightweight weapon with an extremely low signature due to the signature reduction qualities. And we have something that's really good in certain scenarios. So again, when it comes to the Fix, we have a purpose-built tool. Is it gonna fit everybody's needs? No, I I'm probably not gonna end up using it out here much, but it all depends on what you need. So as a treat, you guys are going to go down range and we're gonna shoot at you as a treat. As a treat. So we're gonna be shooting at 220. Uh, it should sound pretty interesting with like the sound delay. So I'm interested to hear it. I'm gonna guess on the impact here. Okay. Wow. Whoa. First try. Not bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a long delay, dude. Do you hear that? I, you know, I almost think I'm gonna miss because it takes so long. Um, so my hold for you, Micah, is, uh, so it's about seven. So hold seven, dead, and you're gonna hit it. Cool. Here, buddy. And that should get you there. Right. Oh, we have Mika Mefield. Let's go. He's uh, repping Sobchak security. Walter Sobchak. I'm gonna do him proud with this shot. Okay. So hold seven. You'll see if you, uh, you just let me know. Hold and, seven? Yeah, so you have five, you see the five to the 10? Yep. Yeah, seven, dead center. <laughs> I was like, all right, yeah, I, I missed, missed yeah. I missed the first one, but. Nope, you're good. Dude, I, th I keep thinking I missed. No, you're good, man. <laughs> That's crazy. That's ridiculous. This is probably among the top three most satisfying, like, recoil to sound, like, impulses, like, sensory overload with this, I feel honestly. My autism is very peaked. 8.6. Uh, with something so new, it's really hard to make a good assumption of where it's gonna go, specifically when it relates to ballistics or actual impact. It's kinda like when the 300 Black came out, it was at first a meme caliber, then it was used within SOCOM and ended up doing a lot of good work. And uh, in many circles, is a great home defense round and is used quite frequently. So with 8.6, I'm not sure where it's going to go. Um, I'm interested to see the ballistics as these projectiles are finalized, as we see um, some perhaps projectiles made for uh, human targets rather than rhinoceroses and see how those work. And I get why it was made, but I think there's a lot of cool application coming up in the future. I will say that what we have right now, I would say is lackluster for human impacts and targets. Wouldn't you agree, Micah? Yeah, I'd say so. A little too much power, a little too much drive through, but I, uh, I am interested armored in- Armored targets. Armored targets. I'm really interested in the armor piercing capabilities of these, um, especially as we get the uh, specialized rounds and especially I'm very interested to see what happens when we were able to get around that dumps all of its energy within 12 inches of ballistics gel because that's 
really indicative of what it will do to a human. So with all that being said, it's a very interesting caliber. Can't wait to see where it's going. The Fix is a cool rifle. I've always been a fan of this very lightweight design. This is definitely something that I would consider having in my pack as a uh, secondary weapon for longer shots in a urban or suburban area. Very interesting setup, incredibly satisfying to shoot. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this um, look at a brand new caliber, the 8.6 Blackout. So get out there guys, get training. Obviously if you have a fix in 8.6, that's really cool. Uh, whatever you have, I want you to train with it. Get really good. The second amendment guarantees your right to firearms, but only you can guarantee that you're actually good and effective with it. So make sure you get out there and train. Guys, we got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys is going to be your dad advice. And for the dad advice for today, we have Mika Mefield. Me again? Yeah. That's twice. I know, you're very dad popular. Advice. Hold on. Here you go. Here you go. Dad advice. <sighs> your dad, dude. Times two. Yeah, I'm times four. Maybe times five soon. Yeah. Um, dad advice will be... Uh, cars. I was going to... Ca cars. Watch cars with your kids, but uh, be, be good with your money. Um, <laughs> it, it's really easy to... Uh, just go out and buy one of these because it's really satisfying. Um, not, not that you shouldn't. But I'm just saying, uh, if you don't have the money on hand, don't spend it. Debt sucks. Facts.